So hello, uh, my name is Fardad. I'm a, um, a second year medical student here at McGill. And I'm here today to interview Dr. Caratzius, an infectious diseases specialist on behalf of MedScale. Uh, so medscale.com, that's for uh, an online platform for the medical community to learn and thrive. Uh, so here we have Dr. Caratzius. Um, why don't you introduce yourself, please? Good morning. Uh, my name is Dr. Christos Caratzios. I'm a pediatric infectious disease specialist at the Montreal Children's Hospital, uh, the McGill University Health uh, Care Center, um, or the Glen site as we call it here in, uh, in Montreal. Okay, perfect. So talking about the coronavirus, um, what's your impression of, um, of COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-19? Uh, yeah. yeah, so SARS-CoV-2 or sars uh, uh, Coronavirus uh, 2019, which is the name of the virus uh, officially, COVID-19 is the disease that it causes. Um, I mean, I think it's a pandemic. Period. Uh, I think it's been a pandemic for at least a week, week and a half, maybe even more. Uh, I think the uh, the World Health Organization is being overly cautious, and I don't know why. There could be political reasons behind it, uh, but uh, it is it's it's a pandemic. It's here. It's uh, it, we cannot stop the community spread as it stands right now, because there's no coordinated uh, global response yet. Each country is doing its own thing. Each. Um, you know, each each district within a country or each province is doing its own thing. There's no central directive. Um, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, it's going to spread through the community uh, before it actually stops and maybe before the WHO um, declares it as a pandemic and starts having uh, a more global coordinated response to, to, to this. Um, is it dangerous? You know, everybody's asking this. Um, the, the The danger is not that it is deadlier than, you know, it's not the plague, it's not, it's not SARS, uh, which killed 10% of the uh, people infected, it's not MERS, which kills 30 to 40%, but, you know, it's not Ebola, which kills 60%, but it is quite infectious. There's a, you know, I mean, infectious diseases experts, we talk about a number called r naught, which is the infectivity, the potential infectivity rate, which means, you know, r naught for this one is you know, anywhere between two and a half to three, which means that one infected person has the potential of infecting three. Those three infected people each have a potential of infecting three. Those three, you know, no, no, no. so it's 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 easily infectious. Um, and you know, the mortality rate <clears throat> that they quote, uh, you know, China two percent, um, uh, Italy right now three and a half percent. Um, but South Korea, 0.6%. It, it all depends on the denominator. We don't know what the denominator is because we have not been testing everybody. And people have mild disease, they think they've got the cold, you know, a, a cold, a simple cold, yet they may have uh, SARS coronavirus 2 or SARS COVID 19. And so the issue is what do we do when we spurt out these numbers? Probably the, the death rate is close to about 1%, uh, but even at that estimate, if it's going to infect 100,000 people, you know, 1% of 100,000 people is still, you know, a th uh, yeah, 1,000. It's still 1,000, so that's 1,000 deaths. And if we think about the numbers that are being quoted out there in terms of who the severity of this disease, so 10%, 15% of people who actually get it get a severe disease that require, you know, uh, ICU. So if 100,000 people get it, 10% of 100,000 is 10,000. Do we have 10,000 ICU beds? We don't. And that's the, that's the concern that we have. And you know, we're talking about 100,000. Or, you know, globally, but when this is done, we're just... Right now, globally, we're 100,000, but globally, when this is done, it could be close to, to a million people getting infected, or even more. I don't know if our healthcare system, well, actually, I don't know. I know our healthcare system is not equipped for to see the severity, the severe cases. And who gets severe cases? The severe cases are people who already have underlying cardiovascular problems, uh, people who already, um, you know, are immunosuppressed, and of course, the elderly, uh, anybody above 60 years of age has a higher risk of, uh, of developing severe disease. 
Right, okay, thank you. And I just have a question about the mortality rate that you mentioned yes. um, in, in South Korea being 0 0.6 yes. and in some other places being above maybe 2 or 3. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think it's just um, that mortality rate, that number, mm -hmm. is it um, just the virtue, just by the fact that we don't test everyone, so we have fewer numbers in this place or more in that place that we know of, uh, and that kind of skews the... Um, um, mortality rate, or there is bed, better care, more ICU beds, or why um, do you think that difference? I'm not sure about the ICU number of beds in South Korea. They're quite an advanced economy. They have a very good healthcare system. What they do have is a very good lab uh, diagnostic uh, and reporting system. So they have tested many more people. You know, 160,000 people and more um, have been tested, whereas in the United States, for instance, I don't think that number is any close. Um, you know, the numbers have jumped in the United States, the numbers have jumped in Canada overnight because suddenly we are now allowed to, you know, the test is to test anybody and not just people with travel to China. So the numbers are going to go up when you. You know, when you look for more, you find more. And I think that's the matter of what's happening in South Korea. They've looked for more. They found more. But at the same time, that mortality rate has gone down because we know that, you know, they have probably tested a lot more asymptomatic people, which de increases that denominator and um, makes the disease less sexy. Um, however, uh, in China, uh, the difference is, is that... Um, why the mortality rate was so high? Uh, the uh, general lung health population, the lung health of the population of China, is probably a little less stellar than other areas of the world. Uh, you know, there's a 30% smoking, 37% smoking rate um, in people who uh, are even in medical school. Um, and so yeah, 37% of medical residents in Wuhan smoke, and this has been a study. Um, males seem to smoke a lot more than females, and the death rate was higher than in, in, in men in, in China. And uh, Wuhan and other areas in central China are some of the most polluted areas in China themselves. And it's the elderly that were uh, sick more than children in China. So um, what we're seeing is somebody who's inhaled all this bad lung, all this bad air, and has been smoking for years, they get coronavirus, uh, the novel coronavirus, and they're in trouble. Um, and, you know, we are seeing this pattern uh, emerge, though, in other areas of the world where it's not as polluted. So, you know, northern Italy, for instance. But I'm not so sure that you know, I think that there's a lot more sick people and a lot more people who have been infected in northern Italy. So that denominator is different. And uh, so it's still too early to say. The theory as to why it was so deadly in China uh, still remains being lung health in general. Um, whether or not it's going to be the same or similar in northern Italy, population there doesn't smoke as much and there's not that much pollution. Uh, we'll have to see. Perhaps it's just a number of uh, of testing. Uh, it's a number. It's a numbers game, and we'll see. I mean, the, certainly the death rate in the United States is not as uh, as high as it as it is as it was in uh, in China. Okay.